In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take entries for your options trades so that you can make trades like this, as well as how you can avoid common market fakeouts that lead to trade failures and time decay on your options contracts. Really quick, before we get into the video, I'm going into this video with the assumption that you already watched this video right here and understand market structure. If you haven't watched the video, I highly recommend going back, watching it and taking good notes because without it, nothing in this video is going to make any sense. So if you haven't already watched the video, be sure to watch the video using the card linked above right here or using the link down below in the description now for those of you that are still here get your notes ready let's get into it all right this is the part where we quickly review what we went over last time and after we review what we went over in the last video we are going to come in here and we're going to find the supply and demand zones all right so if we come up here let me actually come in here and i want to start by just drawing these lines so we can see where they're at and then we'll come in here and label them all right so we got the lines in there now let's get these marked up all right so we got a structure break here then we actually get a market structure shift to the downside and since we're in a downtrend from there we now have some structure breaks to the downside and now that we have this all marked up whenever you see a structure break or a market structure shift, go in thinking something had to cause this. There is a plus if it is something to the upside, it's going to be bullish, so it's going to be a demand zone. If it is a minus, it's going to be bearish and it's going to have just come from a supply zone. So looking at that, the first thing we see right here, we have SB plus. All right, so right here, that means there is a demand zone that created this or a demand zone was created at whatever caused this structure break to the upside. So using that, we can't see it on this chart because it's a line chart, but the last bearish candle before you get to break of structure is going to be responsible and is always going to be your demand zone. So let's say we have our last bearish candle right here. All right, so right here we have a demand zone and this, the next time we visit this, we're likely going up similar to the way we did right here. So we go here, break structure, leave behind a demand zone. All right, we got another structure break. So now we're gonna once again come in here, look for the last bearish candle, draw a demand zone. So we got a break of structure which left behind the demand zone. Now we have a new trading range. Just so you can see, we have the trading ranges are going to be here. Let's, this is a trading range. This is a trading range. This is a trading range. All right, so yeah, just so you can see anything within this range until we get, got the breakup structure would be internal. So right now, up to this point, all of this is internal. So yeah, once again, that is our trading range. And right here, we get a structure break to the upside. So now what caused a structure break? The last bearish candle is right here. So it left behind yet another demand zone. And actually, all right, the demand zone stops right here because we came through and actually blew right through it. You'll actually see we blew right through both those demand zones and we actually chose to react to this demand zone right here. And for those of you wondering why we just blew right through these demand zones, it's something that happens. This is why you want to wait for confirmation. Sometimes some demand zones just hold more relevance than others. Usually if you get a break of a demand zone, I usually just delete it off my chart and then we'll move on to the next. So right here, after we created this last demand zone, we actually came through and broke this demand zone, which gave us our market structure shift. And our market structure shift had to come from somewhere, which came from this pivot point up here, which instead of the last bearish candle, is gonna be the last bullish candle. So now we have a supply zone up here. I'm gonna make that red just to make that a little bit more obvious. We got our market structure shift negative. The negative is telling us we're getting supply zones and we're now trading downside. 
All right, so yeah, market shift negative. And then we actually come down here, re react off this demand zone, and then go up again. Tap into the supply zone, brings us back down, get another structure break to the downside. Something had to cause this. It was actually this supply zone up here that caused it, but now the candle may, maybe the candle looks something more like this, or maybe it goes into there. So maybe now it looks like this. All right. Maybe this was the last bearish candle or something like that. All right. So now we have another supply zone up here. And then, so we got a structure break to the downside. We get another structure break to the downside and we've identified this supply zone. And then we have another structure break which shows us we have another supply zone, which in this case is going to be right here. Then once we break it again, you can see here going back to the trading range, we have this trading range right here. We have some internal structure just before tapping into this supply zone once again and selling off, giving us a new structure break and a new supply zone as well right here now that you know how to identify supply and demand there is one more thing we need to go over before looking at the charts all right so here we are we have our first range right here we have our structure break which tells us there is a demand zone in here and we're gonna come in draw that now pay close attention right here when you're in an uptrend this is something i want you to start looking for now this doesn't happen every time but this will happen a majority of the time Stock price will run up. It'll have a pullback. And let's say, let's pretend this pullback actually comes and touches the demand zone. And then it'll go up again and then it'll have another pullback. But all of this is still internal. But you'll notice the first pullback, it touches the demand zone, but it doesn't go and create a new range. Whereas the second one touches the demand zone and it creates a new range. All right. So what we're going to do to identify this is we're going to come in here and we're going to mark this FL for first low. All right. So in this instance, this part right here is our first low. And then this right here, this second part, sometimes it looks like this. Sometimes it's just past, but just for this instance, we'll have this right here. We're actually just going to label this M right here for manipulation because that is what's going on. This first low is here to fool you, make you think you're getting the reaction. And then the manipulation is essentially here to confuse you and make you think, oh, we now have these lower lows and lower highs. We now have a downtrend on this chart. So we are now bullish. But in reality, we are still trading in this range, which is what you want to pay attention to and why you want to Pay attention to the first low and then the manipulation. Sometimes the manipulation will happen outside the range and it's just one of those things. This is just one of those things to pay attention to. But first off, you want to look for the first low and essentially you want to look for the manipulation for the entry. And the same thing happens to the downside as well. Now this is what it would look like for the downside. So we have two structure breaks to the downside. We're also going to want to come in here and acknowledge that something caused these structure breaks. So got a supply zone right there. And here, let's actually make that red because it's supply zone. All right, so we got a supply zone right there. And we actually formed another one right here. So looking at this opposite to over here, we have a first low over here. We get our structure break and then we get our first pullback. This is going to be instead of the first low, you guessed it, first high. All right, so let's come in. We got our first high right there. We have another pullback and we get our second high. And let's hear, using this example, let's say the first high actually went there. So we have our first high. Now we are looking for, we are not reacting until something passes this first high. So we got our first high, comes back. Then we have our manipulation over here, and then we get our move. 
Now that you know how to find the first low, first high, and the manipulations, let's apply this to a real chart. All right, so here's an example on the QQQ. As you can see, we have an example right here. Here is our bullish range. And then let's come in here and get our first low is right here. All right, so this blue line is representing our first low. So this is our first low. We come down here below our first low and what happens? Ooh, below the first low and we end up taking out that high. That is one example right there of first low right here in action. So we make a low, make a lower low, blast off new highs. Here's an example on Tesla I'm currently waiting on. All right, so on the four hour chart, we have this bullish range. Tesla came down here and made a first low. What I am waiting on is for Tesla to come below this line and once it goes below this line, what I am expecting to happen, something like this. So Tesla comes down, makes a new high, and that's exactly how I would play that. I actually played this earlier on Tesla to the last time it made this move. All right, so the last time Tesla made this move, I was actually able to get in on this action right here. So what happened was, it was on a smaller time frame, but right here, Tesla came up here, made this high. This happened after hours. And then right at market open, Tesla came down here, swept this high, and then took off. And it wasn't until in this range when I realized, but that day I was able to ride Tesla from about 190 to my target was just 195, but I saw it was still moving. So I actually sold out around 200 that day. So just being able to recognize manipulation really presents some nice opportunities. You just learned how to take entries using market structure, but the manipulation pullbacks aren't always right below the first low. If you wanna avoid entering a trade too early, you'll wanna watch this video right here, helping you determine where the stock is likely to pull back to. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, please be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more. And last, but certainly not least, Matthew Manuel signing off, and I want to change your life.